Happy Holidays and Merry Christmas. You're watching Drakewing Gaming. Oh, one moment. And... Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nera here from Drakewing Gaming. Somebody know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of Violet Memoirs. So... The last place we left off, we had just met up with the group, and we were talking, and we were going to start talking about the diary that Wallace found. And well, things kind of devolved into a little bit of a. Uh, well, <laughs> you guys know, like everyone was arguing. Lay is calling Oscar names again. <laughs> you know, things are breaking down a little bit, but still, let's jump right into it and see if these guys can pull it together and delve deeper into this really morbid mystery. Anyway, sit back and enjoy. Let me detain you for the next 20 minutes, and let's jump right into it. <clears throat> All right. Now that I'm paying attention to his shirt again, that glint of metal reminds me that he has a necklace on. I wonder what it is. Yeah, if you want, I can show you more than just the top of my chest. My eyes instantly go up to Oscar's face, his blue eyes swirling with a mixture of amusement and something else. I'm sure he's kidding, and I'm about to give my own playful reply, but I'm cut off by him reaching up and beginning to actually undo the top button. My ears go up in flames, and despite my mind racing at insane speed, my body completely freezes up. Oscar. Lay's, vo Lay's voice is stern and blunt. I can see him glaring at Oscar out of the corner of my eye. The muscle only gives a snicker in response, but pulls his hands away, all buttons intact. He's still staring at me, that massive grin never leaving his face. Hmm. <laughs> you can join me. So you gonna join me later? You chicken it out. They give a silent nod. Mayor's still burning. My head can't help but look down at the ground as I approach the side of the table. Before I can make it past him, he puts a hand on my chest to stop me. I'm not even given a chance to respond before his tail comes up under my chin, lifting it to look directly at him. His face is extremely close, and I can feel my blush deepening. My face feels extremely hot. Despite all the teasing earlier, he looks a lot more sincere now. His long and thick tail caresses my, my chin softly, and I can't help but relax a bit. The smile still plastered across his face seems to grow, too. But what really catches my attention are his eyes. I always noticed they were blue and shimmery, but up close, they remind me of the ocean as the sunlight ripples across the waves. <laughs> hey, I'm just yanking your chain here. I'll never do not, I'll never do something you're not comfortable with. Just let me know if I go too far, okay? Like, with your name. His smile does falter with that, giving it a worried hint, a worried tint. It's just now I'm reminded who I'm talking to. Oscar had has been nothing but kind to me since has been nothing but kind to me and nice. Blah. Oscar has been nothing but kind and nice to me so far. Sure he's flirty, but he's the first person to reach out and help me. Feeling much better and more secure, I move on and sit next to the otter. My flustered face has thankfully proceeded back to normal. Oscar's bouncing in his chair. He looks very excited, and I don't know if it's because I'm sitting next to him or because I've cheered up. So, what's the necklace of? Hmm? What's that necklace? Is it like a gift or something you thought was cool? For the first time since I've met Oscar, he looks genuinely uncomfortable. No games or messing around, just uneasy. He avoids looking at me, a serious expression on his face. It's a stark contrast from the smile he usually sports. Hmm. Let's not talk about that. Oh, sorry, I, I didn't know it was a touchy subject. Don't worry about it. <clears throat> don't worry about it. I just don't like to dwell on things, okay? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I already forgot about it. As if everything's back to normal, he gives me another one of his signature smiles like the last couple seconds didn't happen. He really doesn't like to dwell on bad thoughts, but I can't help but get a sinking feeling in my chest. I hope I didn't drown his mood. He acts like someone who's, who'd hide being sad. Probably someone he lost. He carries that to remember them. Okay, students, quiet down. The room goes silent almost instantly, everyone turning to face the professor. Thankfully, Oscar and myself are sitting on the only side of the table facing the front. We can see the professor clearly, and others have to turn somewhat. I'll pass the sign-in sheet around, then we'll get started. I'm barely able to pay attention. My eyes strain to focus on the professor. My short nap definitely wasn't enough. At least we're finally discussing things with our groups. I don't think I could focus on the professor for a moment longer. Louis regurgitating what I told her earlier, but it just sounds like white noise to me. Psst. Wallace! Lethargic, I turn my head towards Oscar. He's missing his smile, and that alone makes me pay attention to what he's saying. You look like you're about to pass out. You need help? If you want to sleep, I can cover for you. I shake my head slowly, not wanting to be a burden. 
I can't. You guys need my help with the project. He gives just a nod, and surprisingly, no verbal response. When I turn back to look at Lily, I'm given a very delayed reaction by the otter. All I have as a warning is the sound of the neighboring seat scuffing closer to me. Oscar wraps his arm around my neck before I have a chance to respond. He pulls me closer. My face presses into his chest, and my mind immediately goes to how firm his chest is. I know he's strong, but just how ripped he is still surprises me. Not wanting to come across as too awkward, I make sure I'm still facing the others. Lily flicks his eyes towards us for a moment, but doesn't say anything, and it doesn't look like Lily or Lucas have noticed. <laughs> Let me know if this makes you uncomfortable. At least like this, you can have someone support you and a place to sleep just in case. His hand now rests on the top of my head, and he rubs it softly. I've never had someone pat my head before. It feels really nice. Time passes by slowly. The chatter around me is muffling to an indecipherable collection of noises. I want to go home and pass out as soon as possible. Barely any time must have passed, though, since Lily hasn't asked for my input or the, or the diary yet. Instead of a blissful end of class, my phone buzzes against my leg. I don't remember it setting it to vibrate. I must have done it without thinking. I pull it out of my pocket. It's a text, but my eyes can't focus on the name. Opening the message, it displays only two words in the name of the sender. I'm sorry. I feel nauseous. It's as if a bucket of cold, of ice cold water has been dumped on me. All my fur bristles, and I'm suddenly very aware and uncomfortable with where I am. I can't. I can't be here. I need to leave. Now. Panic begins to surge in me, and I stand up, almost knocking over the chair as I do. Whoa! Wallace, what's up? I don't stop to say anything. I just keep heading towards the exit. Wallace, what's wrong? I shove the door open. You're slamming it with how much of a hurry I'm in. But I can't even bring myself to give a shit about that. Before I know it, I'm right in front of the stair I'm right in front of the stairwell. Everything is so surreal right now. It feels like reality is collapsing around me, like it's trying to crush me, crush me into paste. Not wanting to spend another second, I take the first step before I'm suddenly interrupted by my phone again. Opening it up, I'm instantly greeted by that same message. I'm sorry. Suddenly, there's a cracking sound. My phone lays broken in half on the ground, screen completely dead and disembodied from my phone. My, my claw. Claws dig into my hands. I'm clenching them so hard I almost stab myself. My breathing is deep and heavy, panting like I've run a marathon. Turning away again, I run up five more steps before a horrific noise catches my attention once again. It's my ringtone, except there's something very, very wrong. The noise is stretching out, distorting itself beyond recognition into something sinister. It's painful and grotesque. I don't turn around, though. I can't move at all. That's when something more horrific happens. The stairs in front of me are changing. They stretch upwards. No, that's wrong. It's like it's gaining more steps. Getting higher and higher. What? What the fuck? As it grows taller, it curves around into a spiral. I still can't move. It's like I'm being held in place by an impossible force. Not only that, but the stairs' material change? Even the ones below me are shifting, changing from leno to wood? It doesn't just change, but ropes appear to be wrapping around each plank. And there are definitely planks now. I can see the floor and the gaps between the stairs. Even the handrail I'm clutching onto has rope now twisted around it. I don't understand what's happening. I keep twisting and it keeps twisting and growing until I'm look, just looking straight up at the now spiral staircase. I can't even see the top. Turning around, I go to head back into the classroom before noticing that the door is now missing. The wall is instead smooth with no indication that there ever was a door to begin with. That awful sensation increases like the world around is actively mocking me. Am I hallucinating? Have I finally lost my mind? Just as I thought things couldn't get more horrific, my eyes are drawn to the ground. My phone is still sitting there, but only for a second. Then the ground underneath it falls. There's no other way to describe it. It just falls away, drops into some kind of a black void. And the hole grows too until the entire floor is broken away. Now the only place to stand on is the stairs. I'm gripping onto the handrail tightly. My legs are completely trembling. Tears well up in my eyes. What's going on? Hello? Can anyone hear me? There's no response. There's no response at all. Oscar! Anyone? I'm alone. But I'm not allowed to wallow in my stupor for long as a new noise fills my ears. The sound of wood breaking. Looking down once again, I see movement on the bottom step. The bottom step is cracking before my eyes. It breaks away and drops into the dark abyss below. Panic resurfaces to this forefront of my brain, and I'm already moving. The sound of heavy steps echoes out into the darkness as I bolt up the stairs. 
That awful sound of wood snapping continues, much faster and louder this time. I don't look back. It's catching up on me. I can't afford to slow down. I pass what would have been the top of the building, the walls that have stopped running alongside the stairs. The world is just darkness. It's hopelessly empty. The only thing that I can see are the stairs ahead of me, and all I can hear are, the, my, are my steps and the cracking behind me. Said cracking is getting closer and closer. I'm feeling well beyond out of breath already. My legs are screaming, and I feel like I could pass out at any second. The cracking is right behind me now. It won't be much longer till I don't even want to think about that. Just a bit above me, I can make out a dark mass and on the top of the stairs. I must be close. I must be too. I must be close to wherever this leads. My heart feels like it's going to burst out of my chest, both from fear and exhaustion. I'm not even paying attention to what's in front of me anymore. I'm just running. As my foot goes to lift up, the plank below it cracks and falls, and I'm suddenly lurched forward. Instead of falling against the wooden planks and into the deep abyss, I had solid ground. I can't move for a while. I can only lie there in exhaustion. My body is extremely sore. A prickling sensation stabs through my entire lower body. It feels like I can't breathe. Each gasp only giving me so much air. After what feels like hours of just panting on the ground, I finally can move again. I wrestle my body, I wrestle my body back to my feet. My legs still feeling a bit wobbly, but aren't aching much anymore, despite despite my rest likely only being a few minutes. Looking around, my surroundings are familiar but warped. It seems the hallway I just came from to get into the stairwell. Except now the floors and walls are covered in what looks like rope and the floor are made out of wood. Walking through the corridor, I can't help but want to scream. I wish I knew what was happening. If it was a hallucination, surely something would have happened to me by now. I would have walked into a wall or something. A voice echoes around and it nearly startles me into sprinting away again. Wallace, you okay? The voice is smooth and there's a sense of energy coming from it. It reminds me of Oscar, so I can only assume it's him. Before I can really process what I'm hearing, my surroundings shift again. It shifts to what looks like some kind of a fancy hallway. I can't tell much before it changes back. Oscar! Is that you? I yell out with all my strength, my throat, my throat feeling hoarse from all the breathing. When no response happens, I have to hold back the growing feeling of panic welling in my chest. Who knows what, way, who knows what might happen if I stay around here? I gotta keep moving. Before too long, I spot something in the distance. A door. Running up to it, there's a room, there's room number clear written across the top. Room 004. The same room I just came from. Underneath it is a smaller underneath it is smaller writing. It's rough like it's been scratched into, into the metal. I come inside. There's an awful feeling in my chest, hinting that this will be a very big mistake. Calming my nerves, I pull down on the handle, slowly opening the door. The loud squeaking of the door only adds to the dread in the air. The room is dark, but there's enough light from the hallway coming in to let me see what's inside. The entire middle of the room is missing. There's just a walkway going around the perimeter of the room. Well, the entire center isn't missing. In the very middle of the room is a platform raised higher than the rest of the room. On closer inspection, it's actually multiple platforms stacked on top of each other. They're all connected to the same support beam behind me. Behind them. Looks like there's ten platforms in total in the pile. On the top of the highest platform is a horror unlike anything I've ever seen. A person stands there with their arms tied behind their back. Their feet are tied together as well. I can't even see their tail behind them. The most horrific part is that over their head is what looks like a potato sack. The most horrific part is the potato sack and what looks like a noose around their neck. A noose around their neck. It's a gallows. My blood turns to complete ice and my body moves before I'm able to think. I enter the room without a moment's hesitation. Oh my god, holy fuck, are you okay? Can you hear me? The only response I get is a panicked, muffled sound. They must be gagged. The sound of gears turning begins to fill the room. I'm not sure what's happening, but I can already tell it's bad. I run around the entire perimeter of the room, but there's no platform connecting directly to the center. What I do find is a folded down platform on the back of the center support beam. I must connect to the back part of the walkway when, I'm, when lifted. As I investigate, a loud snapping sound startles me and I almost lose my footing. When I run back around to see what I started, the, I see the platform at the very bottom of the gallows folded down. The sound of the gears starting up again. And it's only now I realize that they ended when, when that snapping noise happened. It must be rigged to drop the platforms one at a time. Oh shit. Whoever is on the top platform is hysteric now. They're thrashing in their bindings with no avail. I'll get you down, I swear! Now that I take my focus away from the center, I notice something on the ground at the edge of the walkway in front of the door. It's a little box with a keyhole and some writing across the top. Emergency stop! Can you save them, Wallace? A sense of dread fills my chest. 
I have to ignore it for now, even if it is take, even if it's talking to me directly. This must be the way to stop the platforms from falling. It has to be. But the key isn't anywhere around here. Where the fuck is it? That awful snapping sound happens again, and I see another platform has dropped. There's only eight left. It seems one drop, one just, seems one drops every minute, if I had to guess. Taking the rest of the room, there doesn't look to be any key or anything that can even contain one. It's just an empty room. I quickly rush out of the room and run further down the hall. I'm vehemently on the lookout for anything out of place. Something that might be a key or contain one. Anything! The sound of the platform snapping again makes me run as fast as I can, almost tripping as I bolt down the hallway. My legs begin to burn again, but I ignore them. <laughs> I feel like I've ran more today than I've ran in my entire life. My heart has never pumped this hard or fast before. <laughs> I'm about to lose all hope when I see something in the distance. It's another door! Almost slamming into it, I grab the door handle and yank it open. As it opens, I catch a glimpse of the plaque across the top. Maintenance closet. There's also some smaller writing below it. It's another awful message directed at me. Will you let him die, Wally? Rushing into the doorframe, I'm greeted by another by a relieving sight. A key! <clears throat> it's sitting on a table near the far wall. I'm about to step inside when I register the rest of the room. It's completely floored, save for a small section where the table sits in one long plank that connects that to the door. The plank looks like the plank looks to be in a bad state. It's decaying and about to completely fall apart. I wouldn't be surprised if it broke any second on its own, let alone if I'm walking on it. The length of the room is longer than my dorm's bedroom. But I can't just leave them to hang. I've got to save them. I need to save them. I don't have time to think this out. No matter what, I refuse to be too slow. How should I approach this? Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh... Oh, uh, slow and careful. Okay, we'll see what happens. This looks like it's going to snap already. I don't need to be slamming my weight onto it. It just seems like it'll be a complete disaster. With a deep breath, I test out the wooden plank with one of my toes on, the, on my right foot. Let's see... I'm gonna save this... It feels gross and slimy. I wish I would have worn some kind of sandals instead of being barefoot. A groan creaks out from the plank. I immediately pull my leg back out of fear. After nothing happens, I press forward again. This time I place my entire foot down and slowly apply some weight. It seems to hold my body weight, but I don't want to push it. I slowly slide my foot further down the slim platform, my other foot finally stepping on the plank too. The uncomfortable position forces me to turn sideways and I begin to slowly shimmy my way across the plank. I'm only able to make a tiny bit of progress before I hear the sound of another platform falling, platform falling, echoing down the hallway. How much is left? Five? Uh, six? Five? Will I even make it in time at this speed? Will my attention... With my attention divided, I misplaced my foot and nearly slipped. Thankfully, I only flew in place before regaining my balance. An unfortunate side effect of this is that I am now much more aware of the endless abyss below me, waiting for me to fall into its gaping mouth. The body completely seizes up and my mind freezes, petrified by fear. You know what? Fuck this. We are going full speed. I can't afford to waste time. If I go slow, I might make it across more safely, but that might take too long. That person will get... No, I refuse to let that happen. I won't let that happen. With a final reassuring breath, I basically skip onto the platform. My right foot hits the wood hard, and I immediately push off it, throwing myself forward before I lose my new momentum. As my right foot hits, a cracking sound rings throughout the room. I don't have time to look back, and I just force myself across the rest of the way. The tension in the air is stronger than anything else. I swear I can hear the blood rushing in my ears. After taking another launching step, my knee almost buckles under me. Jesus, my legs are absolutely burning. I don't think, I don't think about how much I ran. I don't think they'll collapse. I don't think they'll collapse. The impact just caught me off guard. With my long leaps, three steps already takes me halfway. I almost lose my balance, but I managed to throw myself forward enough to take the final step before falling. Crashing onto the platform, I land awkwardly on my side. Fear of breaking something surges through me just like the pain. I turn on my back, testing my arm movements and around and flex my fingers. It seems everything is intact despite the pain. Lying there for several seconds, I'm forced back to reality by an echoing snapping sound from down the hall. Shit! The thrill of walking this wooden tightrope has made me completely forgot why I was doing this in the first place. My heart was throbbing in my ears the entire run across. I don't know how many I missed. Grabbing the key, I don't even bother to look, as it, look at it as I shove it in my shirt pocket. Looking back at the plank, I see the source of that cracking noise from earlier. Near the, near the end of the by the door, a long stride away from it, there's a horizontal split across the wood and it's dented slight down slightly. That's going to be a problem. I don't have time to think about it though as I force myself to take that first step back. As my foot hits the plank again, it slips and I'm forced to slam my hand down on the wood to stop myself from falling. I didn't realize how slippery this was. I'm worried I might have doomed myself for that crash, but it only caused the entire plank to bend downwards more. That's still a terrifying sight, though. 
Not wanting to keep my weight on it much longer, I forced myself to stand up and take another step. A few more steps later and the crack is close enough that I can no longer ignore it. The entire plank is groaning and I think I can hear it splitting across the whole thing. I just need to go for it before it breaks apart. Thrusting all my momentum forward, I take a step just past the, pr just past the crack and throw my body forward. Moments after my foot touches it with the crack, the crack breaks apart, causing the entire plank and myself to drop. As I'm falling, I reach out for what I can in front of me. I'm trying to grasp anything I can get my arms on. Slow, agonizing seconds slowly pass until I feel the bottom of the doorway slam into my stomach. I wheeze loudly, but I manage to throw one of my hands through the gra through to grab the side of the door frame. I'm grateful for how thin I am, and I'm able to pull myself. I'm able to slowly pull myself up. My entire body wiggles like a worm to make some ground. After a minute of painful crawling, I'm able to hoist up the rest of my body through the door. I'm coughing loudly, and I'm worried I might have broken a rib, but it doesn't feel like I caused any significant damage. Just a dull ache. I hope that's not just the adrenaline. It takes me a couple of attempts before I'm able to stand. My legs trembling, but holding strong. Oh, okay, I'm, I'm gonna keep going until this is over. A little surge of panic fills me as I check my pocket. The key is still in there. Little blessings. The snapping sound echoing down the hall forces me back in the top gear as I bolt down the hall again. I'm sprinting at full speed down this empty hallway, on the lookout for the door to the gallows. Was it this long before? I wasn't really paying attention to how far I went when I first came down here. A painful, searing sensation rises in my thighs, and I know I gotta get there soon. In the distance, I can finally see the door. At first, I slow down in relief before remembering how urgent the situation is. I slam into the door roughly. A groan, a groan pushes through my body, and I feel some wind, I leave, some wind leave my lungs. Opening the door, I fall inside just in time to see another platform drop down. There's only four platforms left. I run over to the box, pulling the key out as I do. In my rush, I fumble the key, and it clangs across the, floor, across the ground. It feels like my entire world falls apart. I fall apart, but due to some miracle, the key manages to stay on the wooden walkway. Throwing my entire body down, I grab the key and hover just a few inches away from the keyhole. My eyes notice something on the key and I lift it up to my face. It's writing etched on the top. If he dies, it's all your fault. All your fault, Wally. It's mocking me. My teeth grit and I push it out of mind. I have to focus on getting this person out. It takes me a few attempts before I finally push the key in and turn it. As soon as I feel the lock clicking into place, the mechanical sounds of the gears turning, of the gears turning dies down. The struggle and panic from whoever is strung up there quiets down with it. I seem to understand that it's stopping too. There's a flooding relief of relief surging through me. I can't believe I did it. Running across that plank almost killed me twice, but I'm glad I did it. Even though I rushed my way across the entire thing, I still only had four platforms remaining. It would have taken at least double that time to make it across if I had taken my time. With my pride dulling the ache in my body, I'm able to get back to my feet with little struggle. The sound of gears turning catches my attention. It's much quieter than the previous one. As I walk around the room, the platform behind the support beam in the center of the room rises. The moment it locks into place, I'm crossing towards the middle. This platform is thicker than the plank, and after that mess, it's hard to still feel scared. It's like I'm all out of terror. Making my way next to the hooded figure, they don't seem to be struggling all much all that all that much now. I guess he's completely out of fear too. I know I would be. Hey, I got you. You're safe now. There's not even a mutter in response, but I can hear him breathing. My attempts at undoing the knot on the back of the noose are pretty unsuccessful. Having one so close to having one so close to one is making me feel nauseous, much more, much, uh, much more so than the walk of death earlier. Giving up, I notice the sack covering in their face isn't actually under the noose, so I can just take it off. I'm taking the sack off. Don't freak out, okay? Again, there's no response. It's an eerie feeling again, but I shouldn't let pan let myself panic. That only cause things to get much worse. I pull off the sack and I'm met with a sight that shatters me. It's an otter. And not just any otter. It's the familiar otter I've become close friends with over the last few days. Except there's something wrong with him. His entire body is rotting and decomposing. Most of his fur is missing and the skin underneath is a light blue color. Actually, you know what? I'm going to save that. We're going to pick that up. We are going to pick that up after. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, oh my god, this game is turning so fucked up. God, it's like a mix of Saw and Silent Hill. Mm. God, I did not expect it to go in this direction. Man, this is bizarre. I wonder who that person was who sent that message is. Guys, if you have any uh theories, please let me know in the comments. This is really bizarre and strange and creepy. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell until the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!